Hello my lovely students how are you all a very hearty welcome to this mind blowing platform physics wala my name is upur sharma and today in this class we are going to do two poems yes we are going to do two poems first of all we are going to do amanda and then we are going to do these both the poems if you see you know you can quite relate to it the first poem amanda is about a girl who wants to live on her own terms and who doesn't want to you know uh, i was also a child once and even i wanted freedom and similarly you children you know you also want you know some kind of freedom you do not like that your parents you know nag you you do not want them to you know uh, actually uh, you know interfere with everything that you are doing and the similar thing happens with amanda and she is quite irritated by all these things and how she wants to live a free life that is being shown in the poem the second poem that is trees you know if you want try to understand the literal meaning of this poem it's quite difficult to understand but yes you know if you try to understand the symbolic meaning the metaphoric meaning of this poem you will love this poem yes you will simply love this poem now let's start for the poems today in this class we'll have an overview the line by line explanation then poetic devices and in the end we are going to discuss the key points Okay, Amanda is written by Robin McMoclin, who is an Australian author of books for children. Through this poem, she has expressed the views of a little girl, Amanda, who is constantly pointed out by her mother for making mistakes, mistakes which she considers so as they are not part of the code of good conduct laid out by the society in which we live. Now, this poem is written by Robin McMoclin. Okay, and she is, you know. talking about a girl she is talking about a girl whose name is amanda now amanda she is quite irritated by her mother you know her ma mother is always pointing out, you know pointing out mistakes her mistakes and the mistakes which she considers are not good for the society you know the society has laid out a con good conduct you know it, it has you know laid out a code of conduct that we have to follow like how we have to sit how we have to speak if especially if we talk about girls you know they have to follow you know some manners they have to sit properly they do not have to you know uh, hunch their shoulders or do like this and that you know they do not have to behave like boys they shouldn't shout and do they shouldn't do this they shouldn't do that although if you talk about the present scenario not much focus is you know put on these things but if we talk about the earlier times the girls were you know supposed to behave in a certain way and even the boys even the boys they were you know told to behave like uh, you know gentleman they were you know always supposed to you know uh, behave in a certain way now these ways amanda doesn't like okay amanda she doesn't like all these things and she is always against her mother she doesn't like that her mother is pointing out her, at her mistakes and so you know every child likes the same thing you know they also feel that yes their parents are always nagging them they are always on their head they are getting on their nerves so this is a thing with amanda too now but the only problem is that she doesn't like that why the society has set out some rules why there are rules laid out by the society we should live as we want to you know we should sit like we want we should you know eat like we want we should not behave in a proper way you know according to the society so amanda is quite a challenging girl let's meet her don't bite your nails amanda don't hunch your shoulders amanda stop that slouching and sit up straight amanda don't bite your nails you know this is what you, even your mother tells you that you should not bite your nails because she is you know um, she fears that uh, the dirt can go in your stomach and it can make you unhealthy don't hunch your shoulders she is telling her do not bend your shoulders okay do not bend your shoulders amanda this is you know her mother is telling her this stop slouching and sit up straight slouching is like this you know sitting relaxed way she is sitting in a relaxed way and her mother is telling her do not slouch sit up straight you should sit up straight your shoulders shouldn't hunch your shoulders should not bend you should sit up straight amanda this is what her mother is telling her There is a languid emerald sea with a sole inhabitant is me a mermaid drifting blissfully now one paragraph is actually what her, what her mother is telling her and the other paragraph is what she is feeling inside okay there is a thing which is going on you know which is going on inside her head now she is telling 
there is a languid emerald sea there is a relaxed there is a relaxed atmosphere there is a emerald sea emerald sea basically means a green sea emerald is the color of that stone that emerald stone stone which is green in color she is saying that i am in a green sea where the soul inhabitant is me only i am living alone soul means alone i am living in that sea alone i am a mermaid you know who is a mermaid a half woman half fish you know the upper part of the body is of a woman and the lower part is that of a fish okay and mermaid you know it's, it's a hypothetical creature it's uh, not real but she is saying that i'm a mermaid i'm drifting uh, peacefully i'm just moving slowly and there is nobody who is there to you know nag uh, me there is nobody to point out at me i'm just living alone there did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda i thought i told you to clean your shoes amanda now her mother is telling her her mother is asking her have you finished your homework you know like your mother does did you tidy your room did you clean your room amanda as i told you to do so have you cleaned your shoes now the mother is asking a lot of questions to amanda i am an orphan roaming the street i pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet the silence is golden the freedom is sweet now she is saying i am an orphan i'm an orphan i'm an orphan means i do not have any parents i do not have any guardian at my head and i'm just roaming in the streets freely roaming in the streets i'm just you know loitering around i'm just loitering around there is nobody to stop me i pattern soft dust now she is trying to make some patterns in the you know dust with her bare feet hushed here hushed means silent she is trying to make patterns with her silent bare feet bare means uncovered okay she hasn't worn any shoes she does not want to wear any shoes in her feet she is trying to make patterns with her feet like we do on beaches and something the silence is golden the silence is golden means it is worthy the silence is worthy it is you know very it is priceless it is priceless is priceless okay that is why she is saying that it is golden it is golden the freedom is sweet she is actually enjoying the freedom she is saying that the you know it's so sweet the freedom is so sweet i am just an orphan i do not have anybody on my head i am just you know loitering around in the streets that is what she wants to do don't eat that chocolate amanda remember your acne amanda Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? Don't eat that chocolate. Now the mother is asking her, "Don't eat that chocolate." Do you remember your pimples? You know, you have to take care about your pimples. Now she's also saying, "Will you please look at me? Just look at me when I'm speaking to you." Now you know our parents say that you should look at me when I'm speaking to you. You know, you should not look down when I'm talking to you. So she is saying that you just meet my glances when I'm talking to you. and the other thing is that girls girls are supposed to look beautiful here one thing is one thing is hidden here the girls are supposed to look beautiful if they do not you know take care of their skin if they start eating chocolates you know it can give acne and acne can you know spoil their beautiful face so the mother mother doesn't want her to get pimples and all so that is why she is asking her not to eat chocolates and she is not obviously she is not liking this thing I am Rapunzel. I have not a care. Life in a tower is tranquil and rare. I'll certainly never let down my bright hair. I am Rapunzel. She is comparing herself with Rapunzel, a Disney character. Okay, Rapunzel is a Disney princess. She is comparing herself with her. She is saying that I do not have any care, and I am living in a tower. I am living in a tower. I am very happy here. The life here is very tranquil. It's very calm. There is nobody to, you know, pinpoint me, and I am just alone here. And I'll certainly never. I'm surely, surely, I'm never going to, you know, put my hair down. Now, if you remember the story of Rapunzel, what actually happens in Rapunzel is that Rapunzel she is caged in a tower. Okay, she is put there forcefully by her aunt or something. I don't remember that much, but her aunt by her aunt she is kept there and she is not allowed to go out of that tower. Now she is alone there. She wants to meet somebody. So what she does is that there is a boy that you know crosses that tower. She wants to meet that 
boy okay she wants to meet that boy what she does is that she has very long hair what she does she you know let her hair down of the window and the boy what he does you know the boy uses her hair like a rope to climb up the tower and he goes there up to meet her because rapunzel is feeling alone the boy comes to meet her because he you know how he comes he comes by using her hair like a rope but now she is saying i am rapunzel i do have long hair i live in a tower i live there alone but i will not let my hair down i am not allowing anyone to come up the tower i do not want to meet anyone she is making that sure that surely nobody will come up to meet me because i want to remain alone she is you know obsessed with the idea of being alone even being a rapunzel she will not let her hair down she does not want to meet her prince now stop that sulking at once amanda you're always so moody amanda anyone would think that i nagged you amanda stop that sulking sulking means sulking means making sad faces okay making sad faces she is saying stop that sulking you know you do not you do not make so sad faces you do not make such sad faces you are always so moody you are so moody moody means you are always you know making uh, faces and you are never happy amanda and everybody would think that i'm nagging you nagging me nagging you means you know i am you know interrupting you again and again again i'm uh, you know uh being angry at you and everybody would think that i'm not a good mother and i'm always nagging you amanda so stop doing that the mother wants that amanda should be happy amanda should not sulk she should not remain sad now the thing is that with amanda if we see we could relate with amanda although although if we think you know we do not want to be orphan like amanda we need our parents but sometimes this happens you know sometimes this happens that the children they want to live a carefree life they do not care about anybody they just want to you know remain in their silent zone they want that nobody should you know nag them nobody should say anything to them and the same thing happens with amanda maybe amanda is hitting puberty that is why this these things are happening so okay now let's move on to the poetic devices repetition the name amanda is repeated in the poem to emphasize the restrictions imposed on amanda by the adult speaker other repeated words by the adult speaker are don't stop did which further emphasizes the theme of control yes here is the theme of control to you know exercise this don't stop and did is being repeated also the word amanda is being repeated why do we do repetition you know why do we use repetition repetition is being done to create an emphasis you know to emphasize on a particular thing amanda 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 is being repeated because mother is always calling the name of amanda she is always telling amanda to do something or not to do something you know she is always been pointing at her illusion there is also an illusion illusion is indirect reference when we give an indirect reference to a famous person place or thing so that is illusion basically this is imagination when the poet uses imagination and in this case we have used a lot of uh, you know imaginations like mermaid and rapunzel amanda is uh, you know comparing herself with uh, rapunzel and then she is comparing okay first of all she compares herself with mermaid mermaid is a sea creature which is which is half woman and half fish so she wants to be a mermaid she wants to live alone in a sea where there is nobody and she wants to enjoy the peaceful life there and in the other case she wants to be rapunzel rapunzel is basically from a fairy tale it's a disney character she is a disney princess and she is comparing herself to rapunzel basically she lives in an imaginary world where she is a mermaid or either she is rapunzel now alliteration the poem contains alliterative words to enhance the rhyme of the poem okay stop that slouching and sit up straight now in this case s is being you know repeated in the starting that is why s s now stop that sulking s is being repeated that, that is alliteration alliteration you know repetition of the consonant sounds consonant sounds are being repeated metaphor the phrase silence is golden and freedom is sweet are examples of metaphor silence is golden directly it is said 
that silence is golden and freedom is sweet freedom is compared with sweetness and silence is compared with golden why because silence is golden silence is said to be precious at gold as gold you know silence is so precious it is so you know worthy that it is compared with golden and freedom is sweet because freedom is like a sweet you know tasting fruit and it is enjoyable the uh, uh, you know poetess amanda basically amanda wants to enjoy the freedom that is why silence is golden and freedom is sweet is used here anaphora anaphora is a literary device where certain words are used at the beginning of successive lines don't bite and don't hunch did you finish did you tidy these are the examples of anaphora you know these words are being repeated which is in the starting of the uh, poem uh, let me tell you uh, okay did you finish did you finish now these words are being repeated and they are in the starting of the successive lines so this is your anaphora anaphora when a word is being repeated in the starting of the successive lines okay so this is anaphora this is the case of anaphora and here also don't and don't don't and don't is being this is also your anaphora word is being repeated in the starting of the successive lines okay now further transferred epithet the phrase hushed bare feet is an example of transferred epithet in the poem in the phrase amanda's feet aren't hushed or silent rather the phrase describes the silent way in which amanda would make dust patterns with her feet as a street often transferred epithet basically means when it is you know uh, here it is said that the feet are hushed now the feet cannot be hushed she is hushed she, she is basically silent she is silent not only the feet can be silent feet are obviously silent but here they are talking about the whole body of amanda the whole atmosphere is silent where she wants to enjoy where she wants to live peacefully there is no voice there there is nobody who is nagging her and she is trying to make you know dust patterns with her silent feet okay this is being done here so that is the classic case of transferred epithet now uh, let's discuss the key points every child feels that he or she is controlled and instructed not to do one thing or another obviously every child you know they want freedom and they feel that you know they are being constantly pointed at and they are being controlled by their parents uh, children have certain habits their parents teach them to mend those habits they are for their benefit when the parents say that you have to improve these habits you do not have to form these bad habits okay these habits are bad these are not for your own good but the children do not understand okay the parents want them to correct these things but they do not want to do this okay the, although these are for their own benefits the mother is asking not to bite the nails because we do not bite the nails because you know there is a lot of dirt in the nails and when we bite the nails the dirt goes inside our tummy so the mother is asking her not to do that but she is thinking that the mother is nagging her the mother is trying to control her she is telling her to clean her room to clean her shoes so that she appears tidy and you know cleanliness is important but again amanda feels that she is being controlled by her mother she is trying to avoid being controlled by her mother now children have these habits they got because they want freedom they want to feel naturally at home amanda is a small girl and has certain unwanted habits children have these habits now why the children have these habits why do they form such habits you know these habits are not good for them why do they do so they do so because you know they want freedom they by doing so they want to exhibit that we are free you know we have our own will we will do this we will do this because we want to do this thing and they want to show uh, that we are natural at home they want to live naturally at home they do not want to restrict themselves they you know they want to sit as they want they want to lie as they want they want to you know live as they want at their home they do not want to be restricted by as per the you know codes of the society that is why she is saying that do not do this thing they are saying the mother is pointing out her the mother is you know telling her to mend the mistake but amanda is not feeling good amanda doesn't want to do that thing 
she is politely asked to make those mistakes but she seems to live in her own world as she is moody she is politely asked politely she is asked please do not do, do this thing amanda she is not being you know her mother is not scolding her the mother is not scolding her but she is feeling that yes my mother is scolding me and she is becoming very moody she is always sulking she is always making sad faces she is always you know in a sad mood because she thinks that her mother is basically she is, is trying to instruct everything to her so amanda is basically the story of all the children all the children do this thing they know that what you know our parents are saying that is for their own good but they do not want to do that thing because they want their own freedom so let's move further okay now let's start with a very beautiful poem and that is the tree now the tree when we talk about the this particular poem what basically happens here is that here tree is written what what you have to do in the poem is that you do not think that they are talking about the trees you should consider the trees as women basically the poetess the poetess is talking about women but she is not directly saying that i'm talking about women she is using the word trees here so if you try to as i told you that if you try to understand uh, this uh, you know poem literally if you really try to translate the poem into you know hindi and you try to understand it you're not going to get it you know you're not going to understand this poem so you know try to understand this poem by taking trees as women you know you have to imagine that the poet is is basically talking about women okay now again we'll have an overview then line by line explanation then poetic devices and in the end we are going to discuss the key points the poem is written by adrian rich a famous poet essayist and a feminist now this thing we have to consider this poem is written by adrian rich who is a poet essayist and a feminist she is a feminist too who is a feminist feminist is a woman who talks about female rights who talks about the rights of women now we know this thing that is why we know that she is not talking about trees here she is basically try, talking about women in this particular poem she is talking about the rights of women the women have been harassed by you know men for a very long time from generations generations after generation the women are suffering but now in this poem she is telling her that yes it is done it is enough the women have suffered enough now it's time for the women to move on the poem has a symbolic meaning the trees are an extended metaphor for women here the trees are an extended metaphor for women what do you mean by extended metaphor extended metaphor is when the meta metaphor is being repeated in the poem okay simply metaphor means when there is comparison when there is simply a comparison being done when the comparison is being repeated in the whole poem again and again that is called an extended metaphor because the word trees is being repeated in the poem and we know that they are not the poet is not talking about trees basically she is talking about women so this is an extended metaphor The poet says that the women have rested, healed, and recovered, and are ready for their primary purpose to renew the empty forest of mankind. What is the purpose of women to renew the empty forest of mankind? She basically wants to say that the women have suffered enough. Now they have rested, they have healed. You know, they have suffered so many wounds. You know, that can be. She is maybe talking about the physical abuse. She is maybe talking about the mental abuse. that the women have suffered from generations she is saying that now it's enough you know women have protested they have rested they have healed now they have completely recovered now the women are ready to move out of their houses women are ready to move out their houses and to you know uh, actually perform their duties what are their duty what is their primary duty that is to renew the empty forest of mankind you know for the existence of mankind both women and men are necessary you know as men are important for the recovery of the mankind as uh, men are necessary for the mankind even women are necessary for the same thing you know as we can see that the women have you know achieved heights today you know women have become pilots they are astronomers they are in every field you name any field and the women are not there that's not possible okay women have excelled in all the fields but we are talking about the older gen we are talking about older times 
there and then the women you know they had to fight they had to fight basically even for studying even for doing you know small small things even if we talk about 80s if we talk about 80s and 90s and if we talk about the 19th century even in the 19th century up till the 19th century the women were even not allowed to you know practice uh, certain things they were not allowed to practice the medical profession they were not allowed to become teachers they were allowed to study although they were allowed to study they were allowed to study science they were allowed to study astronomy and medical sciences but they were not allowed to practice now here adrian rich wants to say that the women have suffered enough but now they are ready and they are ready to purpose you know solve their purpose what is the purpose of a person any person who comes to this world their purpose is to serve the mankind their purpose is to do something for the society women are also ready for that okay now let's move on to this beautiful poem the trees inside are moving out in the forest the forest that was empty all these days where no bird could sit no insect hide no sun bury its feet in a feed in shadow the forest that was empty all these nights will be full of trees by morning now firstly what are we going to do firstly we are going to understand the literal meaning okay we'll focus on the literal meaning now she is saying that the trees are inside in the forest you know the trees were inside now they are moving out in the forest they were not in the forest woods they were at their home trees the forest was empty all these years the forest was empty all these days because the forest was empty because there were no trees no bird could sit no bird could make their nest there because the trees were not there there were no insect could hide the insects hide in the trees if the trees were not there insects could not hide no sun bury its feet in shadow no sun sun could not give its shadow sun could not give its heat to the trees because the trees were not present she is basically trying to see say that the trees were not in the forest the forest was empty the forest was empty because the trees were not there now in the morning it will be you know filled by the trees you know the poetess the poetess here is trying to imagine something we have got the literal meaning because of the literal meaning we just you know understood that uh, the forest was empty and it will be filled by the trees you know the the trees will move into the forest in the morning but if we talk about the poetess poetess is, is imagining something you know she is trying to symbolically she is trying to explain that the women women were women were inside their houses and because the women were inside their houses the streets were empty the streets were empty the society outside was empty now because the society was empty no work was being properly done no work was being properly done in the absence of women but now the women are ready now the women are ready women will move out of their houses in the morning in the morning maybe she wants to say that the women are now ready the women have protested the women have rested they have healed now in the morning you see all the women will come out of their houses to solve their purpose towards the mankind and they are going to you know uh, you know they are going to come out in the streets and they are going to do what they really want to do okay she is basically you know trying to give a hint that the women are ready to attain their freedom their long lost freedom you know they were not free but today but now in the next day they are going to achieve freedom all night the roots work to disengage themselves from the cracks in the veranda floor the leaves are straight towards the glass small twigs stiff with exertion long crabbed boughs shuffling under the roof like newly discharged patients half dozed moving to the clinic doors all night's the root work the roots work basically she is she is trying to say that the women have worked a lot the women have done a lot to attain this freedom you know if we think if we think even you have read about this thing in uh, nationalism in india you have uh, read nationalism in europe you have read in history that the women have done a lot for their freedom first of all they had to you know work for their um, you know women rights they had to work for the right to vote you know the men were not given the right to vote the women were not as i told you that they were not allowed to practice medical sciences they were not allowed to practice anything they were just you know allowed to study 
at a particular time but now women you know worked a lot women you know they formed a lot of associations they did a lot of things you know even a lot of women went to jail they went to prison they were you know physically molested by a lot of people they did a lot here the roots worked a lot mean that the women worked a lot for their freedom to disengage themselves from the cracks disengage themselves means to release themselves basically she is trying to see say that the women have done a lot to release themselves from the cracks from the cracks basically means the foundations by the society foundations of the society women were actually you know supposed to stay in their limits they were not allowed to move out uh, move out of their house, uh, you know houses they were you know bound by their own family members the women have worked a lot to come out of that in the veranda floor in the veranda floor as we can see that the trees sometimes if you plant a tree in your veranda the true you know roots come out sometimes you know your veranda floor cracks up and the roots try to come out of that the women are also trying to do the same thing firstly they are fighting in their own houses that yes i want to go out i want to work i want to do something for the society you cannot bound me in my own home the leaves strain towards the glass like if you see if you see greenhouses the leaves even the leaves have life you know the leaves sometimes you know they put pressure on the glass strain basically means put pressure the women are also you know putting pressure on the glass means that they are you know trying to shatter the walls women are trying to shatter the walls they are trying to come out of their houses small twigs stiff with exertion small twigs stiff with exertion it means that they are trying to put force here exertion means force with a lot of force like the twigs and the leaves they want to you know uh, come out they want to you know exert their pressure and they want to you know release themselves from you know if you you know bound a tree somewhere the tree will make its own space the tree will try to come out of the floor it will uh, try to come out of the you know walls and everything and similarly the women are also doing the same thing long crap goes shuffling under the roof like newly discharged patients women how are they moving out like if you see in the clinics when a patient is being admitted you know they are you know quite exhausted they are quite exhausted and they want to move out when they move out they move out they are still half dose they are still under the you know um, you can say that they are still under the influence of the medicines they are not recovered properly they are still in the you know they are still you know subconscious you know they are still you know nausea in a state of nausea and in that stage they want to move out of the clinic doors they move out of the clinic doors similarly the women who are moving out of their houses they are also you know still they are half dosed they are half dosed because they are still in a little bit of pain they are in little bit of pain the pain that they have suffered over the years they have suffered over the years you know from the hands of their own family from the society they have suffered a lot and in this condition they are trying to move out of their houses they are ready to move out of their houses like the newly discharged patients like a patient is very happy when he is moving out of the hospital he is you know dancing you know he is very happy that okay now i do not have to live in the hospital anymore i'm going to my house the women are also ready that okay i have been in the house for a very long time now i'm ready to move out of my house i sit inside doors open to veranda writing long letters in which i scarcely mention the departure of the forest from the house the night is fresh the whole moon shines in a sky still open the smell of leaves and lichen still reaches like a voice into the rooms i sit inside the poetess is saying that i sit inside i'm not moving outside i'm sitting inside and from here i'm looking outside i'm looking outside doors open to the veranda my doors are open to my veranda veranda you know na the space which is in the front of the house she is saying my doors are open and i can see everything i can sense everything i can hear i can you know smell everything she is saying that i am writing long letters i'm writing long letters and i'm not mentioning about the freedom of women she is saying na i scarcely mention the departure of the forest from the house is trying to say 
that i do not write about the freedom of women i am not writing that the women are ready to move out of their houses i am not saying this thing why is she saying so you know she is very tactful she is trying to say that as in this poem she has not written women in any way any way you if you read this poem you will not understand basically that she is trying to talk about women you know i have told you that she is uh, talking about women but she has not directly written about the women she is not she has not written that the women are ready for their freedom they are ready to move out of their houses that is why she is saying that i am writing long letters i am writing long poems but in the poems i am not directly mention mentioning about the departure of women i am not saying that the women are you know moving out of their houses the night is fresh now she says the night is fresh the night is young the whole moon shines in a sky still open the smell of leaves and lichen why she saying the smell of leaves and lichens basically she is saying that here i'm sitting in my room i'm sitting in my house and i can feel the women moving out i can sense the smell of women you know i can you know smell the musty fragrance of the women i can feel that the women are ready to move out of their houses still reaches like a voice in the rooms you know the smell is reaching like voices in the room it is seeming as if the women is sitting inside her house and there are a few women you know living next to her in her neighborhood who have fought in their houses who are ready to you know become free she is basically you know sitting here in the room she is trying to you know enjoy the women's freedom she is trying to enjoy that yes the women are you know ready to move i can sense the women i can you know take you know i can enjoy their smell i can sense their smell i can sense their voices that yes they are now ready to move out my head is full of whispers which tomorrow will be silent listen the glass is breaking the trees are stumbling forward into the night winds rush to meet them the moon is broken like a mirror its species flash now in the crown of the tallest oak he is saying that my head is full of whispers i can listen the whispers of women i can hear the women talking the women are talking about their freedom i can hear this thing it will be silent tomorrow why why it will be silent tomorrow because the women will move out there will be no whispers because the women will stop talking will women will stop hushing and they will move out of their houses they will exhibit their freedom tomorrow listen now she is saying the glass is broken she can feel the glass is broken it means the boundaries are broken the women are finally successful in breaking the boundaries they are finally you know successful in breaking the walls the trees are stumbling forward the women are stumbling forward stumbling means that they are you know trying to move forward and this effort they are you know keeping their feet on each other you know as you can see that uh, when there is a lot of crowd the people stumble upon each other they fall on each other you know they keep their foot on each other they you know try to force them outside so she is saying that the women are stumbling into the night into the night they in the night itself they have moved out winds rush to meet them winds rush to meet them it means that the new society the new society is ready to welcome them the society is coming to welcome the women the moon is broken like a mirror here she is saying that the moon is broken into a lot of pieces its pieces flash now in the crown of the tallest oak she is saying that the tallest oak she is talking about the tallest women basically the tallest women basically it means that she is making maybe talking about the bravest women the bravest women of all she is saying that the moon has broken and the moon's broken piece is you know you know set on the head of the woman like a crown the women is wearing the crown of moon it means that the women are successful the tallest women the tallest oak here she is talking about the bravest women of all the bravest women of all she is carrying the piece of moon on her head like a crown she is successful in doing so she is successful in basically letting the all women out of their houses in freedom okay i hope you do understood the poem so this poem basically is all about the freedom of women if you actually try to understand the spite of you know uh, the 
plight, not plight, the plight of uh, uh, poetess and even the sight of poetess, what she is basically, you know, trying to pinpoint. She is basically trying to talk about women. She has not mentioned women once in her poem, but we know that she is a feminist. She is talking about women. Obviously, the trees are not inside the houses. They are not, you know, the forests are not empty. She is not talking about trees in this poem. She is basically talking about women. The women who are bound in their houses by their own family members, by the society. She is saying that the women are not ready to shatter everything. The women are not ready to move out of their houses. Poetic device, personification. The poet has personified the sun by using very feet for it. Now the sun, the sun doesn't have feet, but she is saying that it bury for e feet. So the sun is basically personified. And as I have told you earlier, personified means when a person, when an, an inanimate object or an animal or something, basically who is not a person is compared with the person. Now feet, who has feet, uh, person, you know, uh, persons have feet. That is why sun is being personified in this particular poem. And Jamin, the sentence is being continued to the next line without a break. The forest was trees by morning. In these two lines, if we see, my head is full of whispers which tomorrow will be silent. And similarly, there are a lot of lines in which there is no punctuation mark in the end, but the line is being continued from, you know, it is consistent from the first line to the second line, maybe to the third line without the use of punctuation marks. So this is your Okay, anaphora. It is a repetition of a word at the start of two or more consecutive lines. As we saw in the Amanda poem, no insect hide, no sun buried speeds in its shadow. So no, no is being repeated. Okay, no and no. No and no is being repeated. So here you can see of anaphora. Okay. A word is being repeated in the successive lines. Okay. Imagery. The poet has used kinesthetic Im imagery by giving us a visual description throughout the stanza. A visual description of the stanza is given here. That is why imagery is being used. You know, while reading the whole poem, you could you could actually feel the trees moving. You could actually feel. Uh, everything that the poetess was trying to say. So that is why there is a perfect use of imagery in this case. Okay, enjambment is being repeated. So enjambment has been, uh, you know, written, uh, you know, repeated many times because enjambment has been repeated many times in the stanzas of the poem. So enjambment is a common poetic device in all the paragraphs. Similarly, the poet has compared trees to a newly discharged patients using like. So here we can see like newly discharged poem, like newly discharged patients. Trees are being compared with newly discharged patients. So we can see the use of simile. Use of simile can be seen. Personification, the poet has personified the twigs and bows. We can see that the poetess has, you know, talking, uh, has been talking about twigs and bows. Okay, long crab bows shuffling under the roof. It is seeming as if the bows are shuffling. Okay, as if the bows have qualities like a person and the twigs stiff with exertion. The stiff, the twigs are, you know, trying to exert force on the windows. So, twigs and bows have been personified in this poem. And then, okay, imagery again, we can see imagery. Imagery can be seen. That tactile imagery, what is tactile imagery? We can actually feel. Tactile means we can feel. As I told you, what is imagery? Imagery is when we use our five senses to, you know, uh, the poetess, the, the poets use our five senses to create an image in our mind. We have, you know, talked about auditory imagery. We have talk, talked about, uh, you know, visual imageries. And here we are talking about tactile imagery where we can actually feel because they are trying to say that the small twigs stiff with exertion, they are stiff with exertion, they are trying to exert their force. So we can actually actually feel the touch of force. That is why this kind of imagery has been used. And jamment again is used and in the end we can see alliteration. Alliteration is 
uh, done. Long letters, L is being repeated. FF, forest from F is being repeated. Here, S is being repeated and then this L is repeated in the lines. Okay. Imagery, again, imagery, night is fresh, the whole moon shines, visual sense and smell of leaves and lichen, olfactory sense, olfactory sense, we can actually smell the things, okay, we can smell the things as well, okay, the poet is using our nose as to create an image, okay, so here imagery is being done. I hope that you understood the poem completely and uh, okay simile again there is simile the moon to a broken window the moon to a broken window using like has been used and jambit again is used and again imagery is used head is full of whispers here auditory auditory imagery is being used so here we can see that our three uh, you know four senses four senses have been used our eyes are used to create a visual imagery our ears are used to create an auditory imagery, our nose is used to create an olfactory imagery and our feeling of sense, our you know skin is used to create an tactile imagery. Okay. So, uh, let us talk about the key point. The trees are coming out of their artificial glass houses, they are moving out into their natural habitat, the forest. The trees are metaphors of women itself, here nature is written but women. They are basically talking about women. Here, the trees are moving. It means that the women are moving out, the, out of their houses. They are moving out on their natural habitat. It means that the women are moving out in their society. They are ready to move out of the society. It, uh, the trees are metaphors of um, uh, nature, uh, of, sorry, women. Without trees, forests have become empty. No trees are left in the forest where birds can perch themselves on their tops. Even insects have lost the places where they could hide themselves. The poet is as hopeful that the forest will be full of trees by morning. Basically, wherever trees is written, you can replace it by women. Basically, the poet is trying to say that everything was empty without women, that the society was empty without women. Now, the women have come out of their houses to, uh, you know, exhibit all their duties, their primary duties, and that is to fulfill the mankind, that is to, you know, perform the duties for the mankind. So, to free themselves, the roots continue working all night. They try trying to come out from their cracks in the veranda floor. Small twigs become tough and branches move their positions under the roof. The night is fresh, the moon is shining and the smell of leaves and lichen is spreading out in the rooms. Basically, uh, this is the literal description of the poem and it is, uh, try, they are trying to say that the roots have worked all night. It means the women have worked all night to come out of their cracks. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of pressure for the roots to come out of the veranda floor and they have worked all night to do this thing. The small twigs, they have become so much tough because they are trying to exert pressure on the, you know, glass. They are trying to exert their pressure on the walls. They are trying to break the walls. The night is fresh, the moon is shining and the smell of leaves and lichen is spreading. The smell of leaves and lichen is spreading. It means that the smell could be heard, you know, could be sensed everywhere. And the poet is sitting inside, but the struggle of roots, leaves and branches continue to free themselves. The struggling teals have come out to breaking the glass house and are marching towards the forest victoriously. The women are moving out of the forest victoriously. They have, you know, succeeding in doing what they wanted to do. They wanted to move out of their houses. They wanted to break the boundaries of the society set by their family, set by the society, set by the country. Now they are victoriously, you know, they have moved out of their houses and they are successful in doing so. So this is what Poetus has been trying to say. So I hope you understood both the poems and the, both the poems were lovely. And if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section below. Okay, so let's meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.